Hello, and welcome to this week's CXO Challenge interview on the IT News Podcast. On the show this week is Andrew Cresp, the Chief Information Officer of Bendigo and Adelaide Bank. Andrew joins us to discuss the bank's new cloud training program called Unleash, an evolution of a program set up last year as part of the bank's ongoing shift to the public cloud. Please enjoy. Thanks for uh, for finding some time to, to have a chat. Interesting, the new Workforce Cloud training program. Um, I've had a little bit of a, uh, a look at some of the source content that was handed to me, um, Unleash it's called. Obviously, this ties in very closely with uh, the work you've been doing around consolidating your applications to the ca- cloud in the last sort of 18 months, or at least since the, um, the, the cloud strategy came out, I think mid last year. Um, so yeah, to begin, maybe can you discuss what's been migrated to date through that program and sort of how the, uh, the new workforce, uh, workforce cloud pr- training program fl- fits in with the, the cloud push in general? We basically started, and you're spot on, Justin, good, uh, good research there. We, we, we sort of went with the tech strategy and sort of, yeah, March and went to the, um, with the cloud strategy as well and into the board and into sort of, um, June. And then, um, really last year we, we started, um, a big push in November and in or October, November, really training our people. And we had, um, November, the learning months. And, and then we also, while we're doing that, we, we did the 30 apps and 30 days migration for some non-material workloads to, to test ourselves to see if we could move really quickly. Um, since then, we've had some some pretty big milestones. We we went live with open banking, which is um, a pretty considerable program um, on the cloud that went live on the first of July. And yeah, we've, we've had a number of other um, systems that we've you know we're in the process of migrating and consolidating to across doc management, product and pricing, um, collateral management type type uh, things where we've where we've really moved from lots of uh, different parts of monolithic applications um, in our previous world to API cloud enabled um, in the in the new world and this unleash program is really about you know building of building on what we've done uh, in November last year and and really going to the next level with it you mentioned the open banking platform is, is that also that's on AWS, or is that some of your other platforms that you've um, stood up? Yeah, so no, that's that's on AWS. It's yeah, and and basically, um, people may be aware that that open banking uh, demanded uh, certain response times uh, from a customer perspective. So uh, yeah, we we um, work with our partners in in getting that to the cloud so that we could, as I say to the board members, bring all the data from the depths of our systems of our core banking systems and expose it so that that our customers can can access it quickly and and easily and um you know, in lines with the consumer data rights so um but yeah that that was certainly a significant piece of work's probably the largest state we have on cloud at the moment it sounds like the 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 cloud migration has progressed quite significantly in in sort of the last 7 months or so and obviously this this evolution of your learning month i think you called it um, last year um, is, is a big part of that. And I think back then you mentioned something about around about 50% of the developers have been trained up in or well, upskilled in cloud at that time. How many more staff do you intend to train up through this expanded program? And will it be limited to staff in, in only technical areas? Great question. So yeah, we, we did get through about 50% of the developers. Um, we're sort of looking at 700 seats um, across the organisation. We, we are expanding it. I guess initially we, we sort of focused on architecture and development type skills. We're actually testing and learning at the moment with um, a bespoke uh, class for, for business and we, we had our first go at that and uh, we, we found we we did a pilot. We went a little bit too deep. So um, Ash and Lauren are sort of working through how do we make it a bit more relevant to our business uh, our business customers and, and actually bring it to life to them. So um, we really want to be able to talk to them about workloads that we've moved to the cloud and, and the differences that they will, they'll be seeing and what, what they can ask for us from technology in, in moving more quickly for our customers. So, but yeah, the, the, the second one is l- looking at AI really exploring more with with our business colleagues as i said really building get, getting the next group of people you know i was at a cio session today and we talked about that that 
change groups is, is you get the early adopters and we've probably got a group of early adopters and, and people who are curious and we're really looking to um, with this Unleashed program is to get the next uh, set of people who are curious and interested and can see that it's making an impact and can see that we as an organisation are going to be better um, by understanding the cloud, understanding what it's capable of and cloud and APIs will, will enable us to move a lot quicker for our customers and in order to do that it's not just the engineers that need to understand it. It's a broader organization set so that we can all, as I said, move faster. Right. So it's not just more people that you're training up in this expanded program. It's also the, I guess, the scope of the program itself has been expanded. So you can look towards those more, I guess, emerging technologies like AI and machine learning. Yeah, exactly. And, it, and it's about us becoming aware as an organization about, about the the potential the potential of, of how we can solve problems and it's that case of creating awareness first and and from awareness you get connection and then then commitment part of this unleash change is is about arming our our broader community with the understanding of what what is possible and um that's what we want to do to help our customers out it's interesting you you looking at non-traditional areas um to upskill because I, I remember Qantas as a recent example is as someone who uh, or a company that did something similar and they looked at, you know, cabin crew and pilots and things like that, people who were forlorn during the, the, you know, the recent lockdowns. Are there any particular areas that have shown greater interest in, in looking to upskill in, in cloud skills? Yeah, I, I actually think it's in every organisation, I find that there's a group of technical, curious people who, who work in different business areas and will, through their business, want to continue to challenge and, and look at new ways of working and, and making that work. So I wouldn't say there's one group in particular that, that have done. We have previously focused on being a financial services organisation. It's really important that our, our risk team understands what cloud is about and what, what happens from a control and risk perspective and the things we don't have to worry about anymore and the, the new things that we need to focus on from a risk perspective. I've also been in situations where we get the, you know, we, we actually need to teach the finance team a, uh, about cloud because it's a it's a pretty different operating model from a finance perspective as well. Ollie Murphy, uh, who, who runs our, our cloud platforms team, says that, uh, you know, clouds, clouds are mindset and I, I really think that this this approach to this training and going broader is, is a really important way of people understanding the the potential but as i keep saying it's it's not just about the tech or the engineering organization with other aws skills guilds at companies i guess like nab have done a quite a large um program of work training doesn't always result in in certification so i guess how many staff are you looking to get certified in aws by the end of the year i said that we need to have a hundred but they need to be outside of the cloud platforms team the cloud platforms team I, i'm sort of we're struggling to hold that team back they're, they're obviously the leaders and are wanting to support the organization so so they'll be right up there so so maybe that's a yeah 200 people in total uh, that will uh, would expect to get certified through the process. I think it's a really good point. There's a term that I love that the team have created for this, um, which is about building cloud confidence. is is one of the one of the key things that we wanted to focus on. And that external certification, that validation, that that it's a real thing. You've had to study for the test, work through the pre-tests, and all that sort of stuff is is a really important thing in building that cloud confidence. Is to say that that you've done the work and and that you've got the external recognition. So um, that is something that we we did focus on as a team when we when we set this up is to say lots of people have been to plenty of training courses and and uh, haven't used it but that certification requires a reasonable amount of commitment uh, from from the people involved but it gives a great sense of achievement and brings us back to that cloud confidence um, thing that we're that we're really focused on and and 200 you say around about what what's the What's that coming from? What What's the base at the moment? When we started, I think there may have been less than five people who are certified. So yeah, it, it's a it's a pretty rapid acceleration from from where we were. We we did start our cloud journey quite late, but uh, we've we've got a really great team who are you know um, accelerating it uh, really hard, and and we, we've probably taken a lot of lessons from other organisations and and our partners along the way about doing it the right way and and learning from other organisations which has really helped us and the trainings intended to sort of run the next 6 months so before the end of uh 2021 
is the intention, I mean, obviously the goal of training is so you can run faster with cloud. Is the intention really to ramp up significantly from next year um, or are you managing to do that um, now? I actually think we are sort of going through this this cloud bubble at the moment with our training and, and we are being quite aggressive in, in, in our approach to give everyone an opportunity to learn. And certainly from my perspective, I, I think we'll probably use this second bubble to win the majority of the organisation over, get people understanding it, have people committed to it. And I haven't really spoken about it, but one of the things that we we really wanted to focus on here is is to um, connect with the Bendigo culture. The the Bendigo culture. Um, I've only been here for eighteen months, but is one of the most community connected organisations that I've that I've worked with and and or work within. And um, the team have done a really good job of sure. There's training and and we're in groups of twenty five when when we do the training. But certainly it's supported by cloud community events. Uh, that we have, we, we've had great success. What, what we did learn in November, and I'd have to say COVID's been helpful to us, um, that we, we had these community events on Friday afternoons where people had nowhere else to go. So um, Friday afternoon doesn't seem like an ideal time to be conducting learning, but people would just be talking about what they learnt. And uh, I think we started with a group of eight or so engineers um, just talking about things and just left it as an open invite. And, and I think that those numbers got up to, um, I think, about 180 or 200 people at one stage just joining and people would be talking. And, and one of the rules was that if you're going to present on a topic, you also had to be able to um, put it out there about the mistakes you'd made early on so that uh, we've got a very egalitarian culture. So that, that, that enabled people to, I think, connect and be curious and then, yeah, as I said, I think this really wave of this second wave of training is is going to get the organisation to a, a point of um, great understanding, and and I expect it'll be that that um, snowball that it'll be uh, impossible to stop from that point. You touched on it briefly before, but with the uh, when you talked about the thirty and thirty, I'm not sure if you mentioned, but in terms of progressing to some of the the, the core components of your environment, is have you touched on those at all or, or have you left those for now? They are elements that we've we've done. Obviously, we worked through with our regulator, uh, APRA, on that and, and have been in really great conversations with them and been able to demonstrate through our cloud governance framework how we're, we're taking a pretty measured approach with um, with risk and, and ensuring that our controls are in place. And once again, that was probably something we learnt from other organisations experience that, that we needed to get our governance and controls um, re- really patternised and and consumable by the developers so that they weren't making the rules up as, as they went. So, yeah, that was something that we did in, in our first year and that was a part of our, our cloud and tech strategies that we needed to get the foundations right so that people could really consume uh, those, those patterns which were secure. You know, we're, we're basically you know, working to a rhythm now with outside of the consolidation from a currency and refresh perspective where anything that comes up that, that needs to be, you know, uh, refreshed from a currency perspective, we're, we're sort of moving to cloud as a part of our health and vitality of our systems initiatives. So there's um, lots of good work going on there. You mentioned um, open banking. It's uh, interesting having just, I guess, we've gone past July 1st, which was the, you know, the sort of the deadline when, when uh, banks were meant to come on board as, as data holders. Um, and obviously you guys were, um, you were one of those banks that were there um, before July 1. In terms of next steps, what, what do they look like for Bendigo and Adelaide Bank? And um, how far progressed are the sort of the data recipient side of things, um, you know, ingesting that data? We're looking at that this year. We've, we've got a big slate of work just keeping up with the consumer data rights. Um, the, the list of data that we're going to have available for our customers grow. So we're sort of working through that at the moment. Um, we're aware of other organisations being recipients. We're, we're sort of having a look at that and, and sort of working through where does that fit in from a roadmap perspective. We are actually looking to use the infrastructure that we've created for open banking for other other capabilities within the organisation, uh, the identity and consent management um, we're looking to use the capability that we built there to really um, make our customer identity more secure and easier to use. So there are some, you know, some great opportunities there, and also that speed layer that we created or the cache that 
Um, I know some other organisations are using that term. We're looking to see how we can exploit that infrastructure to, to make things quicker and easier for our customers as well. So, yeah, as I said, certainly there's there's a big backlog of work from a CDR perspective, but obviously we're, we're trying to find other opportunities to go faster for our customers, make it simpler for our customers and make it more secure for our customers. So they're probably the two key areas we're looking to exploit from that. Obviously, AWS is 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 playing a big role in um, the bank's shift to cloud, but it's only one of the providers that you're you're using uh, as part of your I guess your cloud ecosystem. Can you give me I, I guess some idea of some of the other platforms that you're using and and for what workloads? And yeah, is there similar sorts of training programs also being run on to focus on those platforms as well? It is, but being a financial services organisation, it's critically important that. Um, and we we had this discussion with our board um, and exec, which, which is we don't want to get caught in a in a supplier risk perspective where, albeit unlikely to occur, that 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 something um, from a supplier perspective, strategic supplier perspective, went wrong. So we wanted to go with AWS first. We actually think their knowledge of the financial services ecosystem, including regulatory environment, has you know has really helped us and and you know, fast track our, our knowledge with some of our partners on how to work through those, as I spoke about before, governance and control um, things. You were involved in some conversations yesterday with Google Cloud. We're looking to use Google Cloud for our, our front end engagement layer, which which aligns with uh, the work that our up digital platform has previously done. And obviously Google are a data and analytics world leader. So, so we really do want to start using them there as well. But certainly, I guess they're the architectural principles, but from our perspective, we've got a, another architectural approach, which is for, for material workloads and critical workloads that we, we build them in a containerized way that we could move between our cloud platforms. Um, and certainly that's what we've implemented from an architecture perspective so that, that we could and we can move between between those two primary cloud providers from an application perspective if the need arise or if we saw some saw some value that we wanted to take um, from either of one of those and I must say that both of those organizations are, are quite understanding that you know in the in the business that we're in that's a position that we need to take and um, they're supportive of it for the Google Cloud stuff we, we are also looking at lifting our, our cloud capability our training doing doing the same thing and uh, Probably the the neat thing is that the AWS cloud work that's done a lot of the um, a lot of the learnings uh, that we've had will be be able to re be reapplied. Um, so yeah, I, I think we'll be able to fast track some of that as well. That was Andrew Cresp from Bendigo and Adelaide Bank, and that's the podcast for this week. We'll be back with an exciting new interview next week. Until then, you can catch all the latest headlines in Australian IT over at itnews.com.au.